went a little further down the road. I moved into a design engineer position. Then I decided to study for my FD exam and my P exam all in one year. So slowly work through all the problems you can, but don't just work them out to know how to get to the solution. But that strategy that you've just mentioned, I'll be completely honest. I mean, I work with a lot of students, right? They're like, just give me the shortcut. Tell me what I need to know. And then I'm just going to move on. So you, you just take it one step at a time. That's all I can recommend. If you, if you can have discipline for yourself and sit down and study, then you will have eventually have the freedom in your goals. I wanted to uh, get more respect for my field and yep. understand my field even further. So to do that, I wanted to take the PE exam and I have to cross those hurdles. Yeah, uh, FP was the first hurdle. Now it's time for the second hurdle. Hi, Sean. Hi, Wazine. How's it going? It's going great. So, Sean, congratulations on passing your FE electrical and computer exam in first attempt with me. And we'll quickly go through your journey as to, you know, what were the challenges you encountered and roadblocks. So how does it feel after passing the FE electrical exam, Sean? Passing the FE exam was great. A lot of hard times studying for the FE exam. Working with the FE exam, it, it brings you to another level. In the future, I'm looking at studying for my PE exam right now, which is hopefully pushed me up to the next level. I'm super excited. Your course was amazing for the FE, and I'm looking completely forward to your PA course. Yeah, you're in the P-Power program right now. The classes, live classes are going to start soon. So let's backtrack a little bit. John, uh, when did you graduate? I graduated in 2014. 2014, uh, so it's been almost 10 years. Correct, yes. Yeah. Start, I graduated in 2014. I started working straight into the field. I would planned on taking my FE exam probably like three years after school and then just kind of stopped. Went a little further down the road. I moved into a design engineer position. Then I decided to study for my FE exam and my P exam all in one year. So now I'm pushing for the last of it. Great, great. And uh, this was your first attempt with me, but overall second, correct? Correct. Yes. Uh, and what was your approach initially for your previous attempt? When did you My start? previous attempt, I started, I think it was in 2016. And I started going through the classes, but the classes were kind of a little all over the place. Uh, it was hard to follow. From um, another provider. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yes. Hard to follow. Attempted the test, just kind of winged it the first time didn't go so hot and then i just kind of put it on the back burner for a while okay and that was a long time ago right 2016 so you what made you come back uh and uh, revisit uh, fe prep and uh... what made me come back is getting into the engineering design i am now a substation engineer i wanted to <clears throat> i wanted to uh, get more respect for my field and yep. understand my field even further. So to do that, I wanted to take the PE exam and I have to cross those hurdles. Yeah. Uh, FE was the first hurdle, now it's time for the second hurdle. Right, so initially, Sean, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, uh, you initially signed up for just the on-demand course, correct? And then you added live training later on? Uh, correct. Yeah. So with the on-demand course, you were making slow and steady progress, but I guess you were not really gaining a lot of momentum. Was that right? Uh, that is correct. At first, I was just studying here and there. Um, but when I started your course, I developed a schedule for me and I was putting in two hours a day during the week and as many as I can on the weekends. Yeah. And once the live training started, I don't recall because you were active in every single session right? I remember you asking questions pretty much every single session. And I like to keep these uh, sessions very engaging. You know, sometimes you would ask questions on audio, most of the times on chat. And uh, I never consider any question that's asked during the session as an interruption, right? As long as we are staying on the topic, right? So if you're jumping back and forth, obviously that becomes a little bit, you know, disruptive. But the quality of your questions 
really improved slowly and steadily. Initially, you were asking very fundamental questions, right? There's no such thing as stupid question, by the way. Initially, you were asking very fundamental questions and then slowly and gradually, once you started developing that knowledge base, the quality, the sharpness of your questions, if I can call it that, that improved. So how did you, especially in that initial phase, what was your strategy when you're accumulating a huge knowledge base and FE Electrical contains 17 sections, right? How did you approach it? So you you just take it one step at a time. That's all I can recommend. Slowly work through all the problems you can, but don't just work them out and look at a solution, like work at work them out to know how to get to the solution, change up the problems, move them around, do whatever you have to do. So you understand the basics concepts for each topic. Right. And that's the best thing you can do. But that strategy that you've just mentioned, I'll be completely honest. I mean, I work with a lot of students, right? A lot of folks are not willing to do that, Sean, right? They're like, just give me the shortcut. Tell me what I need to know. And then I'm just going to move on. So what is the risk with doing bare minimum as opposed to the strategy that you've just shared? The, the risk to doing bare minimum is not, not succeeding. Um, it is yeah. you, you're setting yourself up for failure. It, it doesn't really happen overnight someone cannot learn a topic overnight like engineering you're not going to learn it overnight no one's going to learn everything in an, in an engineering field there's no way one person can know everything it you can develop over time by doing it over and over and over again and that's the way you progress you grow and a good thing to bring up is that discipline equals freedom uh, right, for sure. Completely is the greatest thing ever. If you if you can have discipline for yourself and sit down and study, then you will have eventually have the freedom in your goals met. Yeah, and in your case, Sean, I I know that you were putting a lot of time and effort, right? Because during the sessions that I just mentioned, you were asking questions during the week when you're solving the homework assignments that I was really uh, releasing and completing the on demand content. You were asking questions. When the live training session completed, then you were basically following up uh, with, uh, you know, clarifications, questions from study guide from the program. So since the day you started your exam preparation till you told me that you passed the exam, you know, minus the time when you had taken the exam and just waiting for the results, on average, every week, you know, you were continuously engaging and, you know, hustling, basically, right? How... Now, there's also the motivation piece in here, right? What was your daily reminder? What was in your mind? How were you keeping yourself motivated and not feeling burned out? I'm sure that you felt burned out during the preparation as well, right? But what was that mental approach or any type of uh, strategy that you were using to, to keep moving forward? So working a nine to five job, it does get pretty brutal on trying to stay motivated every time I come home. I, I don't have time to study in the mornings. Uh, my study time was always at home in the afternoon or on the weekends. And sometimes even that's hard, especially with a family. Um, my motivation was is that each day that I would study, I would gain something. And that's once I sat down and learned that topic, I was all like, I feel very confident with that topic. So let's push to the next one. And with me knowing that your course had a schedule helped me stay on track. It helped me stay on track and study every day those topics I wanted to study for the week. So I had a schedule like, okay, I have to go through all this content. And that was the momentum that I kept through when I first started. At, at first, it was slow. But as it's as a, a couple of weeks went by, it would speed up, speed up. And by the end of uh, the last like month of the course, it was full on. I was putting in like 20 to 25 hours a week. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly, I could notice that as well. And, you know, I have a lot of students in the program and you stood out uh, in, in terms of, you know, the effort that you were putting in and you did get the result. Now, how did the live training, and you've already mentioned that, right? How did the live training, the on-demand 
and the study guide helped you achieve your goal? So the on-demand study guide helped me achieve my goal because <clears throat> it kept me on a timeline and it kept me on track. So I wouldn't stray too far. There were times where I would try to figure out certain uh, problems or uh, basic concepts of the question and I would get lost and I would start searching on YouTube and Reddit and stuff like that. And it was all in your, your videos. So if I would have just went back at first, instead of just wander off, I would have been fine. Right. Yeah. And in terms of um, really packing a punch and consolidating all the knowledge, how, how did the life training help remove that friction? So you said that you sometimes would stray, right? And sort of get distracted and be like, okay, I need to cover this. I need to cover that. But systematically, the content, the on-demand content in live training, how did help that help you remove friction and streamline the process? So the online training really helped because you were able to um, ask questions. That was the big thing for me, asking questions. Because if I didn't understand something, I needed to know how it was done, how you got to that point. And you were always willing to stop and answer every single question we had. Right. And uh, your exam day experience very quickly, Sean. Uh, what were the things that you did right? Outside of the exam, obviously, you had done a lot of preparation, but executing the game plan, right? What was your time management strategy? What was your strategy to deal with the difficult questions? What was your strategy for re reviewing the questions and dealing with stuff that completely flew off your head? So exam day... I don't feel like I've done a whole lot of things right. I was quite nervous when I walked into that exam. Uh, but once I sat down, took a deep breath, I started reading the questions. And for the first section, just like the second half, I went through every single question and answered all the ones I didn't know and flagged every one that I did not answer. And then on the second pass, I approached the more like medium questions I thought. Right. And then did that pass, left the hard ones as flag. Then I did the last pass and answered the hard questions and tried to come up with the solution. But also, as you're taking an exam, you have to monitor your time because it doesn't monitor it for you. Yeah. So once I hit, I said I would set a certain time for that first half and a certain time for the second half. So once I hit that limit on the first half, I would I went ahead and move to the second half. Of the what was the calculation? How much time did you leave for the first half and how much for the second? I left uh, two hours for the first half and then the rest of the... Uh, oh, that's... Oh. So you were very generous with the second half, knowing that potentially there are more difficult questions in the second half, right? Was that the correct. reason? Yes. Okay, That great. is correct. I, I felt uh, very confident on the first half of the exam. The second half made me question myself quite a bit. <laughs> it, it is it is loaded with very advanced topics, of course. Yeah, yeah. And then and then, how are you in terms of timing for the second half? Uh, timing for the second half, I think I completed it with uh, in like three hours, I would say, around okay. about. So that was a good calculation on your part to give a little bit more time to the second half because you seem to have used it all okay great uh, great job uh, sean and many congratulations again and um, uh, you are now gearing up for the p power exam preparation and hopefully you'll get that done at the end of the year uh, we might do another interview once you are done with the p power so that you can share your exam preparation journey and strategy for p power exam prep okay sounds great Rosine. thanks a lot If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section of this video below. You can find tons of stories of my FE Electrical and P-Power students over here. And if you want to learn more about preparation of these exams, then click here to learn more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video.